Hey, greetings YouTube, performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I want to explain what is the technician's point of view and what I'm actually testing when I post a review. Because I go through a very long list of things that are in just about every review video that I've been doing for the past couple of years. So let's go over them individually. Generally the first thing I like to do is go over what the vacuum comes with, what the accessories are, what the controls are, to quote Daddy Doug, the quirks and features, and vacuum cleaners are often very different with all sorts of sizes and shapes. So I think it's important to go through all of those on each individual cleaner. A lot of people don't realize this, but I don't just post my reviews right away. I typically try to daily drive the vacuum, so to speak, uh, for a month, or at least to go through a set or two of its expendables to really give you an idea of how these vacuums are for everyday use. This often brings up all sorts of points. Uh, that you don't see if you've only taken out of the box and test just the suction and then do a video. Actually, using the machine lets you know what makes one stand out from another, both its pros and cons, and you spot a lot of deficiencies this way as well. I think a great example of that is bagless vacuums. People often think this is a great idea, and in practice, they end up being way more hassle than most bag machines. They also tend to cost more to run, ironically. So removing the bag really isn't a good thing. Uh, and again, if you use these consistently for a longer period of time, you'll notice these things. And that's right, bags are still better as of 2021. That could change, you know, 10, 15 years from now. I really don't see it changing. They make the vacuum last longer and they're more economical. And making a vacuum last longer means that you have less waste. A lot of vacuums in one, two, three years you throw away. Most bag vacuums stay around for 10, 20 years. I think that brings me to the other subject, which is vacuum history is super important when we're talking about different machines. Because knowing the company's history, whether it's been bought, sold, who currently owns it, and what their design philosophy makes a huge difference when you're doing a review. For instance, some vacuums, the design philosophy is you throw it away like a disposable cigarette lighter. By others, their design philosophy is appliance, meaning you're going to have it for 20 years and maintain it and repair it if it breaks. For instance, this Mila, made in Germany, is from 1986 and only required bags and a quick clean-out. Now, it's not just older vacuums that are built to last. There are actually plenty of newer vacuums that are made to last as well. I have a whole video where I rate each brand and go over that. But most of the European companies have that in mind, with some of the American companies as well. As far as actually brand preference or shilling, I don't do any of that. I don't take any money from anybody. I don't accept anything to change my opinion. Unfortunately, I'm one of only a handful of channels who doesn't take bribes to change their opinion. There are companies who I favor more than others, but those companies don't know that I exist for the most part. I have to say, last year I did a small segment of ads for Zero G. This was more of a personal suggestion for the owner of the companies than an actual business deal. And it was really just a temporary thing, though I liked the machine before I even suggested doing this business deal. If I don't like something personally, I'm not going to recommend it. And that's a big deal because there's a lot of money to be made by, you know, falsifying results and stuff like that unfortunately, and a lot of the reviews have turned into that. But again, my stance is from the technician's point of view. Part of that point of view is doing a lot of research about the product and going online to some of the Boomer Facebook forums and asking questions, taking the machine apart. So you'll see in my reviews, there is an in the shop section. And I think a lot of people probably fast forward this. I started off doing repair videos, and I think it's really important to look inside and see what's going on in the machine. You can see a couple of car reviewers will do this, but not very many. It takes a lot more expertise to take something apart and put it back together. And that's what I do a lot of times. When I look on in the inside of something, I can tell you how it's made and how the intentions were from the engineers of how it's being made. I think the next thing that's often misunderstood is working vacuum. So I test all the suction, both the sealed suction and the working vacuum number. Somebody pointed out a very good point that some vacuums have a relief valve. Generally speaking, if they do, I usually block it, but very few vacuums 
really have really felt these days, uh, especially with a lot of the modern circuitry as eliminated the need for that mechanical relief valve. So back to working vacuum. Basically, this is a central vac tool. This is for troubleshooting central vac systems. And it was originally designed to see if your central vac could take one of these air driven turbo attachments. So this kind of created a standard of which to test something in the air circuit in a working way, a practical uh, airflow test, if you would. Um, a lot of guys I see get into the trap of airbox testing, and airbox testing uh, is rarely done right. Most of the time, it's a big giant airbox that leaks air or is aerodynamically incorrect, so it creates a lot of air turbulence. And the other thing is a lot of people like to measure in CFM when they do that. And why that number is good to have, it tends not to be as important as this working vacuum number or the sealed suction number. Um, again, that's all debatable, but I just use this as a reference for power between different cleaners. And I think it really makes a difference. Another one I see mentioned is Air Watts, and Air Watts has several different ways different manufacturers have measured over the years, so I don't even get into that one. But let's break down what that testing has led to me finding. Basically, anything over 30 is good. Anything over 40 or 50 is really exceptional and top tier, and anything beyond that is central vacuum territory. However, along the way, I have found a lot of machines have real subpar numbers in terms of their working vacuum, which makes them perform very poorly. The next is a pickup test. And there are several ways of doing pickup tests. Everybody does them a little bit differently. So my idea with a pickup test is rather than put down dirt and debris and then measure it, I much prefer to actually see what it picks up and deal with my hands. And because I'm not just measuring fine sand, because we don't just pick up fine sand. I do breakfast cereal, I do pet hair, flour, uh, and cat litter. And those sorts of things tend to embed themselves in the carpet or not. And you usually can tell what they're left behind very easily, like I said, by feeling with your hand. Now, part of the problem with that whole weighing uh, the dirt, I have a whole video on that subject. The long and short of it, with carpet at least, carpet sheds. And it's almost impossible to figure out how much your carpet sheds per the actual vacuum without doing a very long series of complicated tests that would involve 10 or more of each vacuums and carpet samples. Furthermore, those working vacuum numbers seem to directly correlate with what gets left behind or not left behind and how well a machine works. A lot of people like to think that the brush roller does all the work, and it does on certain designs, but really having that working vacuum number will let you know if the machine from the hose is capable of doing the work before you even add a brush into the equation. Now, the other thing I don't test is large debris pickup. Sometimes I mention it if it's necessary, but that's so little of what you do with a vacuum cleaner, I find it silly that most manufacturers focus on this. And I'll even let you in on a little secret. Almost every canister vacuum will do large pickup without a problem. The spinning brush rollers really don't make any sense besides looking great for an infomercial. I also do that same test on hard floor as well. I think it's really important to see how it's going to pick up on hard floor with a more practical mess. Now on the subject of pickup tests, if you've watched the channel for any time, you know that I use a studio microphone, so you get to hear the real sound of the machine. I also measure from the tripod where the microphone is for consistency. Now this really plays into effect if the machine is a real screamer. And there's a screamer. I'm sorry, I should have given you a headphones warning for that one. But again, I don't see a lot of reviewers talking about the noise in a real world setting. And I think this illustrates my point. That leads me to my next point, is the testing bed I'm using when I do these month-long tests is my house. I have a little over 5,000 square feet, and I have a tri-level house, so it gives me a lot of different surfaces and a lot to test. 
I don't have a fake studio set like a lot of people. So you're getting real world results here. That leads me to my next point where all the animal hair comes from. Um, I have a dog with a double coat who is a husky mix. And we also have two cats. So there's plenty of real world hair and debris on my carpets and through the rest of the house. Because of that, you'll see that there's a stair cleaning section in just about every review I do, whether or not the vacuum balance is on the stairs and whether or not you can clean stairs with the included tools. I think this is a really important thing. And again, it's often overlooked by almost every reviewer I see. Another segment you'll see is low places. And this isn't low performance places, this is low places like how do they get under something and I use the same bed. I actually have two of these beds that are identical in my house. Um, and I find this really lets you know how low it goes. And you can see that again, most canisters will excel at this, but things like stick vacuums and uprights generally have problems with this. Cord length and or battery runtime are also in things. I tend to show them all in the same place going down the hallway here. My house has plenty of plugs, but typically anything under 10 meters or about 30 feet is just too short for my house. And some vacuum cords are really short. Again, this is something I rarely see mentioned in reviews. Next is advertised runtime. A lot of times people just post the advertised runtime on the box and review. This really bugs me. As I found, a lot of the cordless cleaners rarely live up to their advertised runtime. I think the V11 was one of the biggest examples of that is they advertised an hour. And the most I was able, ever able to get out of the original version was about like 12 to 15 minutes. And the newer version, the version two with the removable battery, I was able to get about 18 to 20 minutes out of it. Now, when things really don't live up to their expectations and they continue to advertise certain things, that's when sometimes I will get two or three or four different versions of this and put it through the same test and try it. I've had four different Dyson V11s and they've pretty much all acted the same. I think another point to make is as I do this, I seem to acquire more and more machines. I have over a hundred different machines, maybe close to 150 now. And being able to pull something out for comparison, I find very handy. Again, I don't see a lot of reviewers doing this. Well, I sure hope that answers a lot of the questions in terms of what I test and what I review. If you'd like to submit a product for review, that information will be in the description. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, um, that will be in the description as well as a link to our Discord with our vacuum talk. Big shout out to Robert who helps us with that. Thanks for watching and have yourself a wonderful day.